Hey everyone, welcome back. So in the last video, we talked about differences between on-premise and the cloud networks and why we are going with the clouds and what are the different advantages. Now in this video, as I told you that we're going to be jumping on to AWS Redshift. So let's get started. So let's start by understanding how relational databases execute query. Okay. So generally relational database, when it executes query parallelly, it executes onto the multiple cores. So inside the CPU, we have multiple cores and every query is executed in single cpu only so let's say in a server we have like four cpus so one query will get executed on this particular server only it won't get executed on the others so this is basically acceptable for oltp because you only need to update some of the rows or insert it and just fetch few rows because it is the operational database now if you don't know about the difference between oltp and olap then I recommend you to go watch my previous videos to understand those things because I've already talked about the fundamental concept about all of these things. So I highly recommend you to watch those videos and then watch this because this is kind of the advanced topic. So you need to know the fundamentals to understand these technologies. Okay. Now with saying that now let's talk about the Redshift. So Redshift is a OLAP. Okay. So Redshift actually executes your query into parallelly. So we need those kind of things, right? Because uh, we will be doing a lot of analytics and we will be like pulling historical data in single queries. So we need to execute our query into parallelly. Now, how table is partitioned and partition table are processed in parallel. So generally when we create a table on to Redshift, we're going to be partitioning that table based on some kind of column such as state or any column that is good for the partition maybe by months or anything so based on that it only exec it executes everything in the partition wide so it will basically execute everything these things one by one one by one and that way it able it is able to basically process all those data parallelly and also it is column oriented so generally we're going to be looking into detail about the column oriented so relational databases stores everything in single row so directly every row you write it will store exactly that row but the redshift stores all the things into column format and we will look about the column year storage into detail in the next slide so these are other example data variables available onto the other clouds such as google BigQuery, azure sql teradata and etc so let's understand things about column year storage okay so as you can see over here, we have this particular, this is our relational database and the way it stores each and every row is row by row. Okay. So this particular one single row is been stored in this first block. Okay. So if you want to access this particular row, you can let maybe, maybe use the ID and access this entire row and it will return the entire row. Okay. Same way it stores like all the other rows into different blocks. Now this is not good for analytics because Generally, we do analytics on one single column. Okay, so we, let's say if we want to get the final sales of the product. So what we're going to do, we're gonna, we will be basically summing up that particular entire column to get the final output. So for the relational database to do that, it is really difficult because it has to access all the different blocks and get the final output. But over here, like if the data is stored in columnar format. Okay. So it will basically store all the column information into one single block. Okay. So that makes uh, the computational easy and it able, it is able to basically give you the faster output. So these are the, some of the results. Okay. So it re reduces overall IO format. So in the relation database, you need to do a lot of IOs, but input output is not required that in the columnar store, then it, then it reduces the amount of data you need to load from the disk. So the same way, if you want to access some kind of, if you want to do some kind of analytics on top of relational database, then it will have to fetch all the data, all the entire row to just do one analytics. But let's say if you want to do that onto the columnar storage, then it will be able to basically give you the limited data you want. Each block holds same data type. So this, if this is the integer, then this entire block will be the integer. Okay. It won't store all the other information and you can actually compress these columns and reduce the size and you can also have the faster access. So this is how the Redshift is built onto the column based storage. Now let's look at the architecture of Redshift. So 
over here we have like three things one is your client application client application is us we will be like basically doing ssh or connecting using jdbc odbc connection to the redshift using our pc or any programming language then we have one leader okay that will basically interact with the client and we have one or more compute nodes so that actually computes all over the all of the queries and everything so first so first we have the leader node so leader node basically coordinates and computes all the other nodes then handles external communication so with the client communication it handles that and it also optimizes the query so that is the role of leader node then we have one or more compute nodes so as you can see over here we have this compute node number one compute node number and so we can have like multiple compute nodes and each compute node has its own cpu memory and the disk so if you want to scale up and scale out easily such as add more nodes or get more powerful nodes okay you can easily do that uh, using the ui or the any programming language and then we inside the compute node we have node slices so each compute node is locally divided into number of slices so after so after the compute node we have node slices so basically we can divide our work into different slices say we have the cluster with the n slices so we can provide partition tables simultaneously on each of those nodes so that will make processing much faster okay so this is uh, what the redshift architecture looks like so in this video we basically discussed about all those things so what is redshift o so we discussed about oltp workloads then redshift technologies how it executes everything parallelly then uh, what is the redshift technology in the detail then what is the column in storage and the end-to-end -end redshift architecture i will provide the white paper link in the description so if you want to read more about it go please read it understand it because this is really important to understand and in the next video we're going to be learning about etl on cloud so see you in the next video thank you